What's the deal, baby? It's your boy KJ back in the studio with another video for your viewing pleasure. Hope everyone had a great eventful weekend, and if by chance you didn't, the sports world had more than enough action to make up for your subpar weekend, if that's what it was. Um, hopefully that's not what it was, but uh, so because of this jam-packed sports weekend, I'm going to sum up all that greatness in about 15 minutes. So kick back and let's talk some damn sports, shall we? I was going to start off with some NFL action, but I decided to reorganize my notes so I'm gonna go with the heavyweight championship of the world last night well actually not last night that was two nights ago Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury and I don't know if you guys watched the fight or not this was my first time watching an entire uh, Deontay Wilder fight um, I have to admit I'm not the biggest boxing fan but I decided to head down to Sean Mack's house I actually watched the first seven rounds I live about 20 minutes 30 minutes from Sean Mack and I it was like 12 15 by the time the seventh round came so i said i had to get out of here but anyway by that point i knew that deontay wilder was going to lose the fight and i'm about to tell you why i thought he was about to lose the fight so anyway big shout out to his trainer malik scott so if you guys didn't know uh deontay wilder fired his last trainer uh because of the fiasco of the last fight so we hired malik scott and i have to say he came into the uh the match with a great game plan. He actually seemed to confuse Tyson Fury a little bit. Uh, he started going to the body. As soon as he came out, he probably threw about 15, 16, 17 jabs to the body. And it actually looked like it confused Tyson Fury. So for the life of me, after the first round, why Deontay Wilder went away from that that tactic is beyond me. Uh, he came out with those jabs and right hands to the body, then he began to unload. Fury put him down, let's see, in the third round, Wilder got up, then Wilder put Fury down in the fourth, Fury got up, and then he put him down again in the fourth. And then the fight went on to about the 11th round, 10th round, and that's when Fury pretty much ran out of gas. Is it just me, or did he look like uh, one of Thanos' minions when he came into the ring? I mean, he looked, he was huge, and I forget, I was talking to C. Anthony, and he was telling me that, I forget what boxer it was, but he was saying when you get that big, and you're not used to fighting like that, you're really stiff. And as soon as the bell rang, I saw exactly what he was talking about. Like when every time that Wilder would throw a, a, a punch, it was like, like the Hulk or something, you know what I mean? Just very slow. And Now as you see, he knocked him down twice, especially that first knockdown. The second one was, eh, it still could have hurt possibly, but that first one was legit. And you could tell it shook up Tyson Fury, but that dude's got a jaw. Now, everybody's saying that De Deontay Wilder is the strongest puncher of all time. Does that mean that Tyson Fury has the strongest jaw of all time? I'd really like to know. And one last thing on Wilder. Now, Fury, he's a great boxer. To be 6'7 and be that light on his feet, his defense is, is great. Some of the best defense from a big man I've seen in the last 20, 25 years. But um, as far as, far as Wilder goes, his technical boxing skills are absolutely horrendous. Did anybody else come out of that fight thinking that? Now, I've seen clips of him, and I've seen multiple rounds of him fighting, but this was the first fight, and maybe it's just because Fury's boxing skill is so much greater. Now, to put a little content, that's the fairy out there. and No, that's the train, I'm sorry. Um, to put it into context, Tyson Fury started boxing at 10, and Deontay Wilder started boxing close to 20 years old. So, the experience level is different. But um, he looks like he has no boxing skill. He just looks like he's out there punching. Um, everybody's saying this was a great fight. It was a great fight in that they both have a lot of heart and they just kept throwing blows at each other. In that aspect, it was great. But as far as boxing goes, you had one boxer that's good at boxing and another boxer 
an another boxer that's horrible at boxing but has great power. Now, does that make for a great boxing match? I mean, the inevitable. And then why does he keep getting hit in the temple? Does Tyson Fury have like the best accuracy in the world? He, Deontay Wilder, that was the third time he had gotten knocked down by a shot directly to his temple. I mean, he has immaculate accuracy, Tyson Fury, that is. Because he keeps hitting him in the temple and he keeps crumbling like that. So uh, I, I, I thought that was amazing. But um, great fight when it comes to entertainment, but not so great when it comes to, if you like watching boxing and the, the technical side and all the nuances in boxing, it wasn't a great fight but it was so leave in the comments tell me what you thought about the fight and uh yeah that's pretty much my analysis on that uh heavyweight champion of the world fight on saturday night now moving along we're going to get into some nfl real quick and i want to touch on this before i get into the scores and all that i want to get into this john gruden nonsense that uh came out yesterday or was it the day before yesterday um yeah so let's get into that real quick so I'm not even gonna lie to you. I've always liked John Gruden. He was a funny dude, always came off as pretty genuine. Never heard anything bad about him outside. He was extremely passionate about football. And if you're not that type of guy, you're probably not gonna get along with him. But as far as just being a human being, never heard anything bad about him. So when the emails came out that he wrote and when he was talking about, uh, uh, what, what was his name? D. Maurice, what's his name? Um, I forget, the head of the Players Association. Uh, D. Maurice Smith, he's the Players Association president. Um, I think I'm saying his, right, his name right. D. Maurice Smith. But anyway, um, it came out in one of these emails that he said that he had lips the size of Michelin tires. And this was back in 2011, and he was referring to uh, D. Maurice Smith. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Right? It seems like I'm saying it wrong. So forget me if I am. But anyway, yeah, he said he had the lips the size of Michelin tires. And and me being a goofy person and I like to joke around, I actually found that to be extremely funny. But if you if you look behind what he said and seeing that he's talking to a black man who does have see, I can say this because I'm black. He has peculiar lips. His lips are the type of lips that you'd probably make fun of if, if you're a black person making fun of another black person say in grade school and you and you knew him as a kid um his lips are the type of lips that you probably make fun of let's let's just put it like that but coming from a white man you can't say that as a white man you can't tell another black man he has the lips the size of michelin tires you just can't say that especially in this day and age on on in, in a public forum such as email that's supposed to be private but people know you can't say crazy stuff in emails because some some all someone has to do is just screenshot it and share it with the world so um yeah so that's kind of the sticky mess that john gruden has himself in right now um now gruden later told espn he used the term rubber lips to describe someone he saw as lying and that he was frustrated by the lockout at that time and failed negotiations between Smith and Goodell. So his excuse is he always used the word rubber lips. And because he thought that he was lying so much, he used the term his lips are the size of Michelin tires. So I don't know. Do you buy it? Do you not buy it? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent to it. I thought it was funny. Um, I didn't think there was a bit of racial undertone to it knowing i don't know him but just knowing his personality from watching him on tv now i know people's personalities can be different in real life but sometimes you just get a vibe from somebody and he doesn't seem like the type of person to do that in public and have racial undertones to it i i just think he's smarter than that and i don't think he would do something like that so anyway i just wanted to get that off my chest before i got into these nfl scores so with that being said Let's do this roll call on the NFL scores yesterday. So the first game on deck is that Thursday night game between the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. Los Angeles Rams won 26 to 17. And as we all know, Russell Wilson hurt his hand. He will be out for at least six to eight weeks. Geno Smith will step in. We'll see how that goes for the Seattle Rams, who are now two and three, and the Los Angeles Rams are four and one. And they are tied for first place in the NFC 
East, Matthew Stafford was 25 of 37, 365 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Before Russell Wilson left the game, he was 11 for 16, 152 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Heading down to Florida, Tampa Bay just absolutely crushed the Miami Dolphins, 45 to 17 down there in Tampa Bay. Tom Brady the ageless one uh he was 30 for 41 411 yards and five touchdowns you just know that he was going to come back this week after that subpar performance in, in new england and he was just going to absolutely torch miami uh miami uh falls to one and four um another new england former new england quarterback uh jacoby Brissett, taking the place of uh tua tagliavoa he was 27 of 39, 275 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Uh, Miami, Miami falls to one and four, and Tampa Bay fall uh, increases the record to four and one. Excuse me. Uh, the Patriots headed down to Texas, facing off with the Houston Texans, and they won 25 to 22. Uh, Mac Jones was 23 of 30, 231 yards, one touchdown, and one interception one interception and David Mills was 21 of 29 for 312 yards and three touchdowns I will say this this is kind of alarming but uh the Patriots need to show up that defense to have that rookie quarterback carve them up like that unacceptable and one thing another thing about the New England Patriots they better start scoring touchdowns instead of field goals the field goals that's not going to cut it Folk hit like four I think it was four yeah four let me see. Yeah, four field goals yesterday. I mean, come on. That's that's 12 points. If you didn't have him, you'd have lost the game. So, come on, Patriots. Step it up. Um, Jets went over to London, and they played the London game out there against the uh, Atlanta Falcons, Falcons and lost 27-20. to Another slow start for the Jets. They're going to have to start doing better than that. They always come on the second half. The first half, they look like a college team. Um... Zach Wilson was 19 of 32, 192 yards and one interception. Matt Ryan was 33 of 45 for 342 yards and two touchdowns. And the Jets fall to one and four. And the Atlanta Falcons are now two and three. Um, going back to that previous game, the pa Patriots and Texans. The Patriots are now two and three in the second place behind the Bills, and the Texans are now one and four, sitting in last place in the NFC South. Um, moving along, Packers versus Bengals. Packers 25, Bengals 22. Uh, crazy stuff happened in this game. Crosby missed four field goals and then at the end of the game won the game on a uh, 49-yard field goal. Absolutely crazy. Um, Joe Burrow had to go to the hospital because he had a contusion on his neck. Um, he was 26-38, 281 yards, two touchdowns and two interceptions. Rodgers was 27-39, 344 yards, two touchdowns and one interception. Uh, Burrow's having tough luck with the injuries in the NFL. Second year in a row, um, he's had a big scare. So let's hope that uh, everything works out with him. Green Bay is now 4-1. Four and one after winning four games in a row since that opening day loss to the New Orleans Saints, and Cincinnati is three and two. Pretty surprising record there for uh, Cincinnati. Um, let's see here: Lions lost to the Vikings, nineteen to seventeen. Broncos lost to the Steelers, twenty-seven to nineteen. A little redemption for Ben Roethlisberger. He had two touchdown passes, fifteen to twenty-five for two hundred fifty-three yards. Um, Teddy Bridgewater, twenty-four thirty-eight, two hundred eighty-eight yards, two touchdowns and an interception. All the teams that passed up on Teddy Bridgewater, shame on you. He's just, everywhere he goes, he puts up good numbers. I don't understand why a team won't just settle on him and say, he is our franchise quarterback. Uh, I, I'll, I'll never understand it. Um, the Saints beat the Washington Red, I'm excuse, excuse me, Washington football team. I can never get used to saying the Washington football team. I'm used to saying the Redskins. But anyway, the New Orleans Saints beat the Washington football team in Washington, 33-22. Uh, Jameis Winston was 15-30, 279 yards, Four touchdowns and one interception. He looked really good yesterday. And Hinky was 20-41, 248 yards, two interceptions. New Orleans is now 3-2. and two. Washington is now 2-3. and three. Um, Eagles versus Panthers. <laughs> this surprised me. And Hurts is surprising a lot of people. He's not putting up crazy numbers, but he's managing the game. And uh, he's doing a really good job. Philly won 21-18. Uh, their record is now 2-3. Carolina's is 3-2. and two. Uh, Jalen Hurts was 22-37, 198 yards, one interception. Sam Darnold, 21-37, 177 yards, one touchdown, and three interceptions. That New York Jet Darnold uh, showed up yesterday. 
I know Carolina does not want to see any more games like that. Um, Titans beat the Jaguars 37-19. Uh, the Bears beat the Raiders 20-9. So the Bears, uh, Fields throws his first touchdown pass. He was only 12-20 for 111 yards and a touchdown. But he threw that one touchdown pass and they won. That's what I always say. Winning cures everything. Numbers don't have to be great. Carr was 22 with 35, 206 yards in the interception. Uh, Vegas is now 3-2. And, and Chicago, like I said, is 3-2. and two. Uh, Moving along, the Cowboys just absolutely destroyed the Giants 44-20. Uh, Mike Glennon came in for the Giants because uh, Daniel Jones got hurt. He was 196. Uh, 16 for 25 for 196 yards. A touchdown, two interception. Dak Prescott. Playing at an MVP level, 22 with 32, 302 yards and three touchdowns and an interception. Cowboys are looking like the real deal. If I had to guess right now, it's going to be the Cowboys in Tampa in the NFC Championship. Like I said, Dak playing at a MVP level, and the Giants are just falling apart at the seams. Saquon Barkley, Daniel Jones, a number of uh, Galladay got hurt yesterday. It's just a complete mess out there in New York. Hopefully, they can right the ship but it's not looking good for the New York Giants right now uh, 49ers lost to the Cardinals 17 to 10 and the Bills beat the Chiefs now the Bills are my Patriots rival but in a case like this I know Mahomes is chasing Brady because everybody's so quick to say that Mahomes is like the greatest thing since Jesus Christ but um whenever Buffalo can beat the Chiefs even though it's a detriment to me because they're in our division I just love it because nobody's comparing Josh Allen to Tom Brady. So let Allen get his shine off. Uh, uh, so great that they lost. Pat, uh, Mahomes has thrown five interceptions in the last three games. Uh, he was 33 of 54 in this game, 272 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. One of those interceptions was a pick six, which is big. Um, Josh, Allen, Josh Allen was only 15 of 26 with 315 yards and three touchdowns. I didn't mean to say only. He only threw the ball 26 times. Uh, had 315 yards and three touchdowns. Buffalo is looking like the real deal. They really are. I'm not sure Kansas City is the favorite anymore. I, I really don't. Not after that showing. I do not think they're the, the favorites in the AFC anymore. That would that nod would go to Buffalo probably. And uh, one other note on that Tampa Bay game. Antonio Brown is the fastest receiver to catch 900 catches. He also had two touchdowns in that game against the uh, Miami Dolphins. Let's head into some NCAA football, shall we? Now, before I get into those scores, I'm just going to do the top 25 scores, all the, uh, the most meaningful games this weekend, this past Saturday. Um, what's going on with UConn football? I know that's not a big uh, bleep on anybody's radar, but I'm from Connecticut, originally from St. Louis, but I live in Connecticut, been here over the last 30 plus years. So I root for UConn. Now, they have this thing, you know how the top 25 uh, schools, they have the, the AP rankings or whatever it's called. Well, they also have the bottom 10, so the worst 10 teams in NCAA football. And guess who the two worst teams in college football are? I'm sure you can guess that UConn is one of them, and the other one is UMass. So UConn and UMass are the two worst teams in all of the FBS, right? Both come in, no wins, both just completely horrible. And UConn lays an egg again, and they're now 0-7, and, and they lost to UMass 27-13. How is that even possible? Now, let me tell you their, their quarterback, the line for their quarterback. Now, the guy they wanted to start, um, his name is, I forget his name, but his brother plays for Clemson. They're both from Bridgeport. Um if I try to pronounce his name right now, it starts with a P. Um, if you're from Bridgeport, you know his name. But he got hurt last week. So this other kid comes in. Krajewski? Krajewski? Krajewski. I think that's how you spell his last name. He was 13 for 24 for 128 yards. One touchdown and two interceptions. He had a quarterback rating of 5.3. 5.3. Incredibly, disgustingly Horrible. How do you have a 5.3 QBR? I just don't get it. Why we can't get a good quarterback to come to UConn is beyond me. Because there's a lot of good quarterbacks in Connecticut. One of these next group of kids going to say, you know what? I'm tired of my home state's team being trash. 
they need a group of uh, studs to say, you know what, we're going to go to UConn and we're going to revitalize that name. Because right now, I mean, I mean, God forgive me, but my high school alma mater, which is Brian McMahon High School, they're just disgusting. I'm not used to this. UConn football used to be great. Brian McMahon football used to be great. I'm dealing with that and then the Mets and then the Patriots going through this rebuilding stage. It's just a complete mess. My Spurs are in a rebuilding stage. I remember my sports uh, viewing or my sports teams were at the pinnacle. Every NBA, NFL, uh, not so much MLB, but every once in a while, MLB, all my college teams were great. And it's complete reverse. Even UConn men's basketball, the women's basketball team isn't as dominant. It's just a complete mess here in Connecticut. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest before I got into these uh, these uh, college scores. So with that being said, let's get into these college scores. Um, I'm going to start off on Thursday, October 7th. Coastal Carolina, ranked number 15th, beat Arkansas State 52-20. to Where did Coastal Carolina come from? And I hope later on, 10 years from now, we won't have one of these ESPN 30 for 30s where they talk about uh, people paying people to come to Coastal Carolina because I never heard of this school. And then just all of a sudden, I remember maybe like, what was that, about eight to 10 years ago, they made this run through the NCAA tournament in basketball. And then all of a sudden their football team's good. Now they're ranked number 15th in the country. Just where did Coastal or Coast Carolina, where did they come from? If anybody can help me out, leave it in the comments. I have no idea how they just popped. Is that a new school or did they just come up from Division One AA? I'm not sure. But anyway, they destroyed Arkansas State 52 to 20. Uh, Cincinnati, the number five ranked team in the country, won 52 to three. Arizona State beat Stanford 28 to 10. Oklahoma beat Texas 55 to 48. Oklahoma's ranked six. Texas is ranked number 21. Number seven ranked Ohio State beat Maryland 66 to 17. Number 11th ranked Michigan State beat Rutgers. 31 to 13. Arkansas, the number 13th ranked team, lost to the number 17th ranked team, Ole Miss 52 to 51. The number 20 ranked Florida Gators beat Vanderbilt 42 to 0. The number two ranked team, Georgia, which is now the number one ranked team, beat Auburn 34 to 10, who was ranked number 18. Uh, Boise State upset BYU, the number 10th team, 26 to 17. Wake Forest, the number 19th ranked team, beat Syracuse 40 to 37 in overtime. SMU, the 24th ranked team, beat Navy 31 to 24. Uh, Iowa, not really an upset, but because uh, they were ranked number three, beat Penn State 23 to 20 at home. Michigan, the number ninth ranked team, beat Nebraska 32 to 29. Notre Dame, the number 14th ranked team, beat Virginia Tech 32 to 29 down in Virginia. Uh, Kentucky, another surprising team this year, ranked number 16, beat LSU 42 to 21 in Kentucky. Alabama, the big upset. They lost to Texas A&M 41 to 38 down in Texas. That's a big game. And San Diego State, number 25th ranked team, beat New Mexico State 31 to 7. Now let's just get back to that Alabama Texas game real quick. What's going on with Alabama's, Alabama's defense? I don't think I've ever seen a team without a star player put up that many points on an Alabama defense that by all accounts was supposed to be very dominant this year. So that's very concerning. I'm not really sure if they have a lot of injuries or whatnot. If anybody has any insight on that, please leave in the comments. But that was very, very, very shock shocking. They did not have one sack the entire game. Not one. Texas A&M had four sacks. Uh, Alabama had zero. Very little pressures on the quarterback. Uh, who, had, who played a very good game for Texas A&M. So uh, I just want to give him a big shout out. So moving along, little Major League Baseball action. So let's see here on Saturday, the Braves beat the Brewers 3-0. The series is tied at 1-1. Um, let's see here, the Dodgers beat the Giants 9-2. That series as well is tied 1-1. Um, yesterday, the Red Sox beat the Rays 6-4 in a a very entertaining way to end the game. A lot of excitement, a lot of drama. And the White Sox just absolutely destroyed the Houston Astros. We're going to get into that in a second. But as far as the Red Sox game, super entertaining game. Um, now, what happened was Kevin Kiermeyer. That's how you say his name. Kevin Kiermeyer hit a shot. Now, if anybody knows Fenway Park, when you hit it out to the outfield, if you hit a line drive or something like that and the ball starts to drift 
after it lands in fair territory and it starts to drift off to the foul foul line wall everybody knows that wall is very short out there and if it hops over it's a ground rule double and that's basically what happened nobody scored it was the bottom of the top of the 13th excuse me and they would have took the lead and Yandy Diaz would have scored but instead he had to stop at third second and third Boston gets out of it and of course subsequently um, they hit a two run homer right after that and that's basically the game the Red Sox win uh, six to four uh, let me find out who hit that home run it was Vasquez who walked it off for the Boston Red Sox with that two run home run heartbreaking loss for the Tampa Rays and let's see if they can turn around Surprisingly, Boston leads the series 2-1, to one, so let's see if uh, Tampa Bay can pull that magic out they've been doing the entire season and turn the series around a little bit. Getting back to that Houston White Sox series, looks like White Sox reliever Ryan Tepra implied that the Astros may have been stealing signs in Game 1 and Game 2 of their AL Division Series after Chicago won the third game Sunday. Houston was going for the sweep after a road to a pair of impressive victories at home, but it struck out 16 times in a 12-6 loss to Chicago after it struck out a total of 16 times in the first two games. So pretty much the, the pitcher is pretty much implying, how are you guys not striking out so much at home and all of a sudden you're striking out a lot once you come to Chicago twice as much as you were striking out each of the other games so I guess that's a question for the Houston Astros I'm wondering if he heard anything did he hear anything banging or anything like that if you're gonna come out and say something like that you gotta have some proof just don't be mad that you guys didn't get the job done the first two games so uh, I'd like to hear from him and whether or not he has any proof of that or he's just feeling some type of way or is it just a coincidence that the Astros played so bad once they came to Chicago. So anyway, we're going to move along to the NBA. We're almost done. I'm about to wrap this up. I just wanted to know, is anybody worried about the Lakers in the long run? They haven't won any games in preseason. Now, I know it's preseason and most of the starters haven't played, but it uh, doesn't look like they're gelling too well as of yet. And you see this a lot with super teams. They come out of the gate kind of slow. The only exception was probably the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant. Um, but other than that, if you think of any, well, no, Boston. Boston didn't, they, they got out to a hot start, actually. But when you have this many great players on one team, it's going to take some time. But they got hammered by Phoenix. They actually got hammered every game this preseason, except for the one against Golden State. And I think LeBron really won in that game. But like I said, the starters didn't play that many minutes. So, um, yeah, leave in the comments. Let me know if you're worried about the Los Angeles Lakers this year and whether or not they loaded up too much with too many different types of personalities. And one last thing before I get out of here, uh, Kyrie Irving turns out that he can now practice with the team, but as of right now, he still cannot play home games. And he's, he's staying strong to his word. He's, he's not budging. He's basically saying, I'm not taking a shot. So you do what you want. If you trade me or try to trade me, I'll retire. And if not, you're just gonna have to deal with it. I think that's his stance now. I respect it. If I could have did that, I would have did it when it comes to my own personal life. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. So I had to go get the shot. So um, I actually applaud him. There's nothing they can make that. I mean, he don't need the money. So either let me play or don't let me play. That's basically what he's saying. So I definitely applaud uh, Kyrie Irving. Um, for what he's doing and I wonder what that means for the Nets. Do you still think they can win an NBA championship? Because believe it or not, I think they're better without Kyrie. Now, that might sound shocking, but I just never thought those three players, depending on those three, as much as the injuries come into play and stuff like that, I actually think having another point guard would be more beneficial to the Brooklyn Nets than having Kyrie there for the full year. And if you agree with that also, or disagree, leave that in the comments as well. So anyway, that wraps up the Sports Fans Only Weekend Wrap Up, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Before I go, I want to leave you with some encouraging words. If you're someone trying to build a business, trying to finish school, trying to get that promotion, trying to make that sports team, or buy your first house, or whatever it may be, or whatever it is, whatever you do, please, please do not stop. Keep pushing keep grinding 
There's gonna be times when it gets very difficult, but being successful isn't easy. I promise you this, if you just keep focused and don't let outside distractions, things that don't really matter in the grand scheme of things, as long as you don't let those things knock you off course, I guarantee you'll make it. The one, you could th one thing you can never do, no matter the circumstances, give up. Because if you give up, there's only one thing that's guaranteed. You will never, ever accomplish that goal. So do yourself a favor, just keep pushing. The reward is right around the corner. This is your boy KJ. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next week. You guys take care. Peace.